Living life in middle and high school can feel really hard and overwhelming. Anxiety and depression are common. We need to talk about it and make it okay to say you're not okay. Students in South Washington County Schools came together to talk about mental health. Here is what they had to say. Hi, my name is Anita Chetty. I'm Allison Benjamin. My name is Michelle. I'm Olivia. I'm Pao Fu Chao. The biggest thing that stresses me out is my grades, but ultimately it's just balancing sports, school, clubs, church, family, friends, just all of it. Probably one of the biggest stressors for me is fitting in and worrying about like family issues or worrying about like girl trauma or things like that. There are a lot of things you can do to help somebody who is dealing with mental health issues. I do frequently check on my friends, a lot of my friends, and I, I'll send little texts, hey, how's like, how are you, how's your mental health? I just think if you are noticing your friend is really struggling, you can just let them know like, hey, like if you ever need anything or wanna talk, like I'm here for you. Um, some people like speaking out about their feelings and some people don't. So I think that if they do, just be straightforward and ask them if you're that close with them. Um, I think just letting them know that you are there if they want to talk. You just gotta like put it out there, like rip off the band-aid. And like once that conversation has been started and that topic is out there, I think you'll find that it's so much more easier, you know? Be a good friend, you just have to be there for someone. You have to be supportive along all their steps of the way. And if you're, and maybe you could ask like, are you okay? or do something with them to make them feel better. I knew if I received that message, that would just mean a lot to me. And I, it mean that I knew someone was caring. No matter how much I think I relate to somebody, I don't know exactly what they're going through. So the best thing you can do is just sit there and listen to them because that's sometimes all people need to do is just vent. Um, and then if somebody asks for advice, then give them advice. But I think, I think it's reassuring to just have somebody who can listen to what you're saying. You can't minimize what they're going through and you can't say that, oh, everything will get better because you don't know what their mindset is. You don't know how they're approaching problems. So I think that just being there and being a source that if they need someone to rely on, you can be there for them. Honestly, mental health topics is very common within my friend group. We like to talk about how we can be these allies for our community. No matter what anyone is going through, just to be there and just be kind, honestly, because you never know what people are going through on their day-to-day -day lives and you don't know if like you just waving or like saying hello or just being kind will like make someone's day. Telling your friend if you feel comfortable when you're not having a good day because if if there's somebody here who seems so perfect and like you don't think there's anything wrong with their life, you're not going to want to tell them, yeah, actually I'm experiencing some depression right now. Social media is a very like hard thing with things like with mental health because it's a good way to like distract yourself but also it's not really like, the best way to like go in your bed and then just hide in your phone all day like the thing is that I've definitely done it a lot <laughs> like I'm very guilty of that but also it's like comparing yourself to other people online it's just a big it's a hard thing for people like going through mental health is so personally I've struggled with like self-image issues and being on social media and seeing like the perfect body or perfect whatever ha is detrimental and has impacted me negatively so it's just really key to keep in mind to not compare your things to the, to what you see on social media because it's just not realistic. For me, it really helped to just take a break from social media. Like I did, I think I did for about a month or two months, like for my junior year, and I just deactivated my Instagram account and I didn't go on Snapchat that much because that actually does take a toll on my, at least on my mental health. But taking a break and deactivating your account definitely helps. Um, I know I struggle with anxiety and a lot of times when um, I'm freaking out, my sisters would distract me and they helped me like a lot. They'd be like, show me your favorite dance move. <laughs> and it was silly, but it did really help. And they distracted me and it made my anxiety attack like end a lot sooner. The teachers, our teachers in District 83 care a lot more about us than we think. And they really do love each and every one of us. So if you ever feel alone or if you ever feel like you don't have anyone to talk to or no one's listening to you, you can always go to your teachers. 
And that's something I learned throughout high school that I can always go to my teachers. And it really helps because you build that connection and then you have someone at school who you trust and it definitely helps make school better. I know that I've dealt with mental health battles throughout my high school career and just having the different like resources at the school that I don't think many people know about like going to your counselor and there's also I know that there are like therapists that come to the school uh, if people would contact their counselors and let them know if maybe it's just mental health things that they're going through and that or like depression or anxiety just letting your counselors know that because they have the tools and resources to adjust like your teachers accordingly and just help your experience like, be a lot better. I would just want them to know that there's always people there for them. Um, whether that's a teacher, whether that's, I can, I'll be there for them. If it's a parent, a friend, there's always gonna be someone there for them. There are social workers and counselors in all of your buildings. What we do is we talk to students and families and teachers and staff about concerns that they're having. Um, it could be minor, it could be major. And we just help you out and um, figure out a plan. It is normal to feel nervous before something big or a critical moment. Um, maybe you notice that stress response that you hear about sometimes, like a fast heartbeat, shallow breath, maybe getting warm. Uh, it's also normal to feel sad and tired uh, or exhausted or depleted after a loss. Um, if you can feel these things and go and do your normal most of your normal day, like eat meals, sleep well, talk to your friends and family, go to school, do the things that you have to do and things that you enjoy, you are likely coping with your stress appropriately. When you can't or don't go or do most of your normal day, like, like I talked about eating, sleeping, talking to friends and family, going to school, or if you're isolating yourself, um, maybe you're tearing up in class, lashing out at others, or if you just stop caring, like, I don't care. Um, and this lasts weeks or months, um, or it affects many areas of your life. Um, that is when you might want to think about talking to someone about your feelings, thoughts, stress, anxiety, sadness, or anything else that you're concerned about mental health struggles can just be so incredibly hard in a way that maybe others can't understand and so I don't know just take it slowly and make your way through it and know that like any progress is progress like if you need to go second by second then that's what you do uh, say if your goal for the day is to just get out of bed and like eat something and take a shower then that's completely valid just like do what you need to do like I've gone through these same things and someone who is going through mental health struggles, I just want to talk to them. I want to tell them what I've gone through personally and tell them that they're not alone. All I have to, all I have to do is listen because I need someone to talk to. I needed someone to talk to and I want to be that same voice for someone else. I feel like if we all learn to give each other a little more grace every day and support each other, we can create a better community, especially in these hard times. Everybody has mental health issues. Um, even people you think don't. Like for me myself, I'm the student class or the student council president this year and people would think that I'm handling everything perfectly. But there are always those times when you're gonna feel down. So I think that we need to start normalizing mental health and it's okay to get help. Don't lose hope. You don't lose hope because I didn't lose hope and <laughs> look where I am, I overcame those things and I know you guys can too. Um, but it's gonna be hard for you guys. I know you guys can do it. Thank you to the mental health champions in South Washington County Schools that participated in this video. It's okay to talk about mental health. It's okay to get help. Mental health is just as important as physical health. People in your school care about you. You are not alone. Let's talk. This video was made possible by the Prairie Care Child and Family Fund. Their mission is to raise awareness and reduce the stigma of mental health issues facing young people.